This is a story that I call Obedient George. George was a very good boy. He always did what he was told. That's what obedient means. He obeyed what he was told. The, the trouble with George is that he didn't always think first about whether this was the right time or place to do something he had been told. You'll see what kind of trouble that sometimes caused. George lived at the edge of town and his grandma and grandpa lived on a farm, a little farm, just outside of town. It was close enough and he was old enough, he could walk there by himself. And it was fun to go there because there was always something interesting happening on the farm. Now, one time when he walked over to visit, Grandma and Grandpa had been baking homemade cookies. Now, the story doesn't say what flavor cookies. You could imagine if it was your favorite chocolate chip, peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, whatever. But the thing about these cookies is that they were not little cookies. They were big cookies, as big as your face. Still, George managed to eat two or three. Mm, oh, they were so good. And there were still some left. So his grandparents said, George, would you like to take some of these cookies home? And George said, oh, yes. Oh, thank you. They said, now, you're going to have to be careful. These are very rich, crumbly cookies. You have to be careful how you carry them. And George said, I'll be careful. So he held out his hand and grandma and grandpa piled up a stack of those cookies. You can pretend what it would be like by holding out your hand and pile up a stack of those great, big, delicious cookies. They said, now be careful. And George said, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'll be careful. And he put his other hand on top and he held them as tight as he could. Now, what happens to crumbly cookies when you hold them that tight? Well, he held as tight as he could, and as he walked home, he looked up at the sky and the clouds and the birds, and he looked down at the ground, at the flowers and the bugs, and by the time he got home, all the cookies had crumbled and fallen through his fingers. He said, Mama, look, I got a whole pile of cookies from grandma and grandpa, but, but now they're all gone. I held them tight. They said, be careful. She said, oh, George, that's not the way to hold rich, crumbly cookies. What you should do is put them in something. You could use your hat, because you see, George always wore a great big cowboy hat. She said, you take off your hat, you put the cookies in the crown, the top of the hat, and then you very carefully put it back on your head and the hat will hold the cookies in place and they won't break. And George said, thank you, mama, I'll remember that. And he did too. Now the next time he went to his grandma and grandpa's house, their cow had had so much milk with so much cream that they were making homemade ice cream. Now the story doesn't say what flavor, What's your favorite flavor? Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, mmm, peanut butter cluster fudge is my favorite at the moment. Think about what your favorite is. And George ate bowl after bowl of that ice cream. It was so good, but there was plenty left. And they said, George, would you like to take some ice cream home to your family? And George said, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. So they gave him the big thing of ice cream. They said, now, now take, well, he said, wait a minute, I know what to do to carry ice cream home and be real careful. And he took that ice cream and he scooped it. He took off his hat and he scooped the ice cream into the top of his hat. And then he put the hat on his head and he started home. Well, as he walked along toward home, the hot sun was shining down, hot, hot, hot. And he felt something kind of run down his, down his face and something run down his back. You know what it was. 
By the time he got home, his clothes were all icky with melted ice cream. He said, Mama, Grandma and Grandpa gave me some ice cream. I put it in my hat, like you said, but it's all gone. She said, George, oh, I wish you would think first. That's not the way to carry ice cream. What you should do is freeze it really cold and hard first, and then it won't melt on the way home. Just put it, put the container in the sink and pack ice around it till it's really frozen. George said, thank you, Mama. I'll remember that. And he did too. Now, the next time he went to his grandparents' house, their dog had had a litter of puppies. They were so cute. They were playing and tumbling around on the floor and, and George played with them. And when he was ready to go, his grandparents said, George, would you like one of these puppies for a pet? And George said, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And he picked out the liveliest, the most energetic puppy. And they said, now, George, be real careful getting that puppy home. And he thought, I know what to do. He put the puppy in the sink and he packed ice around the puppy. And the, <laughs> the puppy got so cold, it couldn't even wiggle. And then he carried it home and he had no trouble. He was so pleased. Mama, look, I have a puppy. And she said, oh, George, oh, the poor thing. And she wrapped it in a warm towel, and she gave it warm milk to drink. And the puppy was fine, but she said, George, that's not the right way to bring a puppy home. I wish you would think first. Ah, what you should do for a puppy is you should make a leash out of something. You should, you could get a piece of string, not too long, not too short, tied around the puppy's neck, not too tight, not too loose, and then you put the puppy down gently so it won't be scared, and you pull on the string, and the puppy will follow after you. Can you remember that? And George said, yes, ma'am, I'll remember, and he did too. The next time he went to his grandma and grandpa's house, they had been making barbecue ribs. Oh, the ribs were so delicious. Oh, they were so tender and, and tasty. And George ate a whole lot, but there were plenty of ribs left. And his grandma and grandpa said, George, would you like to take some of these ribs home to your family? And George said, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. They said, now be real careful because we hear you've been having trouble getting things home. He said, I know what to do. He got a piece of string, not too long, not too short. He tied it around a bunch of ribs, not too loose, not too tight. He laid them down on the ground very carefully so they wouldn't be scared, and they weren't. And then he pulled the string and the ribs followed him. But so did all the dogs and cats in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. By the time he got home, Mama, I had barbecued ribs and nothing there but bones. And his mother said, George, oh my goodness, I wish you would think first. That's not the way to bring ribs home. Look, George, I have to run some errands. I'll stop by the grandparents' house. Maybe they have some ribs left. But if you stay, but I want you to stay here. And if you go into the backyard to play with your puppy, please be careful. I've been baking pies for the bake sale and I put them on the stairs to cool. So if you go down those stairs, please be careful and step in the middle of those pies. George said, step in the middle of the pies. I can do that. And he did too. She went off. He went out the back door to play with his puppies. He saw those rows of pies on the sides of the steps. And so he stepped in the middle of each pie. <laughs> and played with his puppy. When his mama got home, ah, George, she said, oh, George, oh, George, we love you very much, but we wish you would 
think first. And that's the story of obedient George. It's a story about somebody doing exactly what they were told, but not at the right time. And it's a story that's easy for you to remember if you wanted to act it out. There's George's house and the grandparents' house and the road in between. And the characters are his mama and his grandma and grandpa and George, of course. And you probably want a narrator. And the beginning of the story just explains how George is such a good boy, but he doesn't think first. And then the middle of the story starts when George goes first to his grandparents' house. And you remember they had been baking cookies. Show me how they were carrying the cook, how he carried the cookies. A big pile, but he held them too tight. So his mama said, no, George, the right way is to put it in the top of your hat. And that helps you remember what he got next, which was ice cream. <laughs> his clothes must have been all soggy. And then his mama told him the right way to carry ice cream is to pack it in ice so it'll be really frozen. You ever get ice cream from the store and it's so hard you can hardly get a spoon into it? That might be good for ice cream, but remember what he carried that way? Puppy. <laughs> and his mama said, what you should do is get a piece of string, not too long, not too short, tie it, not too loose, not too tight, put it down gently, and the puppy would follow. But of course, good old George, he used that method to bring the barbecued ribs home. <laughs> and all the dogs and cats followed, ate all the meat, there was nothing left but bones. But that's not the end of the story yet. Remember, his mama went off to do errands and maybe get more barbecue and left him at home saying, be careful. Now, here's the trick in this story. Be careful to step in the middle of those pies. Because if his mama said, do not step in the pies, good old George, he would not have stepped in the pies. But she said, step in the middle of the pies. And so George <laughs> stepped in the middle of those pies. Well, the end of the story is when his mama came home. Oh, George, we love you very much. And we wish you would learn to think first. That's the story of obedient George.